So I have been asked to talk about color spaces and especially because you can select color spaces in your camera and um, the listener wasn't clear what that actually means and which one to choose. So let me show you just briefly what a color space is. And this is a visual representation of a color space. This is the R Adobe RGB color space. And you have probably seen that either in your camera or in your software somewhere. And this is a, a three-dimensional representation. We can actually move this around and you see that it starts here at white. All the different color channels are white and then the different mixes of the color channels all the way down to all the way black and then you have all the different shades of colors. And if you would slice this open, you'd have um, all the different kinds of colors. And this is a pretty big color space. It's a uh, captures a lot of different colors, a lot of different shades of all the colors. Now, let me hold this for comparison. Let's compare this with the sRGB color space because that is the second color space that we see all the time. So, here we go. And now if I swirl this around, you will clearly see on the outside that's the Adobe RGB color space and then on the inside there is the sRGB color space, which is smaller. So again, it obviously has white and it has all the way black. So that's where the two kind of intersect. And over here on the blue end, uh, they are pretty similar, if, if not the same in some areas. But then if you turn it over to the green side and the green, uh, different green tones, the sRGB color space cannot hold as many colors there. Um, same with the red and uh, magenta area, a slightly bit bigger than the Adobe RGB color space. So what does that mean? Well, it means that they hold a different amount of colors and the Adobe RGB color space actually is a bit more vibrant in some areas. The problem is if you want to show these pictures in public, it is typically on the web and that means you will end up with a smaller color space because the web is, well, limited and all the browsers kind of expect sRGB. So you will have to kind of downsample this whole thing into sRGB anyway. The other thing is if you select any of those color spaces on your camera, it will not affect your RAW files. Your RAW files have their own color space and the selection doesn't make any difference in your camera unless you shoot JPEG because the JPEG gets influenced by that, but not the, the uh, RAW file. Now, let me do one more comparison here. Just briefly, uh, let me bring up Adobe RGB again, hold for comparison. And now we want to look into CMYK profiles. Those are the profiles that printers use. So if, if you print something out on, let's say a book or something uh, here in Europe, Euroscale code, it is often used. Uh, let me dial that up. And I think you get the idea. The color spaces of paper are even smaller than the color spaces that we use on our computers. So. That one is actually <laughs> fairly small. If I want to compare this with sRGB, one last comparison here. Where's my sRGB? Uh, here it is. Hold for comparison. And now direct comparison with uh, Euroscale. Code it. And you see that sRGB is a bit smaller than the Euroscale coded here, at least in the green and blue area and a tiny little bit in the yellow-orange area. So um, what that means is that the sRGB doesn't really translate that well into your Euroscale coded, but it's good enough most of the time. So this does only matter if you shoot in JPEG on your camera. Set whatever you want. As long as you process RAW, you will end up with something that kind of uh, works. And if you print, if you print a lot, then using Adobe RGB as an export format will work better for some of the vibrancy, but the printer needs to be able to handle Adobe RGB as well. If you give them Adobe RGB and they expect sRGB, your prints will come out wrong. So 
the whole thing is kind of confusing. If you think this is really confusing, then I suggest stick with sRGB. It might not be the optimum all the time, but it will work much better. You have a lot of chance for error if you go with Adobe RGB and you don't really know what color management is. So my suggestion, if this is confusing to you, use sRGB. If you want to publish your pictures on the web, use sRGB. If you shoot raw, then at least to get this into Lightroom and work on that, you won't have to worry. <laughs>